Hello, I'm Eric with Narrow Road Van Conversions, and I'd like to take you on a walkthrough of my latest build. So this build is a Ford Transit 350 High Top Extended. And as we walk inside, the first thing is we've got a little bit of storage area here for a rug or maybe flip-flops or anything else you might want handy right out the door so you can stretch that out so you don't track dirt up and inside. So starting in the front, we've got passenger and driver swivel seats in this van, and we've got a Lagoon swivel mount table that we can set up here for eating. In addition to that extra counter space, we've got a, a flip-up extension for the countertop. All right, in the last van, I had one that was kind of permanently fixed and it tucked in behind here. This customer wanted a wider counter that uh, had a little bit more eating space for him and his wife. So I made it so that this one could store up against the wall and get locked in to position for travel. It can be picked up and out. Set on to the swivel pedestal and then it can, uh, it can swivel you know, into the walkway for some extra prep area, or it can just be a, an area for eating for both the driver and the passenger. And it tears down just as quickly as it goes up. Take it, set it into the bottom holster, push it against the wall, lock it, and it's secured in position. We had some extra space up here and the customer decided to go with a bench seat here for just a little bit of extra space. The seat comes off, um, so there's full storage down under there to store extra items. The seat goes right back in. So a little extra space if you're entertaining. Here we have uh, a refrigerator and a freezer. It's just an AC, it's an AC refrigerator and freezer. Um, opens up. It's kind of nice to have a, a fridge and a freezer. What's pretty nice about the this fridge is uh, I've got a locking mechanism on it that you can pull out and lock for travel so it doesn't fly, uh, fly open when you're taking a hard left hand turn. There's a hidden sink underneath a cutting board that you can use for extra counter space on top or you can just set it aside. Uh, when you're using the sink. Uh, I do really like this sink. Uh, I will put the link and descriptions below to this. I got this one off of Amazon, so I'll put a link to that if you're interested in picking this one up. I really like this one because you can turn it on here. Also, turn it on and off at this point. And with this on, you can wash your dishes by saving water. So what I really like about this faucet is its water saving features and you can just dial it down to a little trickle if you're washing your hands or doing some dishes. So, really conserves water. So I like this kitchen faucet. Right next to the faucet, we've got a three-stage water filter uh, with uh, purified water. So you can fill up anywhere you're comfortable filling up and you'll know that you know, it's doing its job cleaning out the impurities uh, for your drinking water. Moving backwards down, we've got the cooktop with a flip up countertop to expose the cooktop. So that's again, a nice uh, additional counter space usage when you're not using the cooktop, you can have extra counter space. So we've got a three burner propane stove here with an oven below. So it's kind of a nice option. Uh, there's no microwave in this. So it's a nice option to be keeping your food warm and to do some baking if you're interested in. This customer wanted to have a more of a simple look, uh, kind of a Scandinavian spa feel. So we went with very simple cabinet faces, nice clean edges. So this is what we ended up with, with a nice clean look. On this side, we've got a lot of upper storage cabinets. We've got um, two in this front section here. You can see these are actually quite big. You know, these fit in and out here 
These back three compartments are also quite large. Um, plenty of space for a backpack or a duffel bag or even a television could uh, swivel mount and go in here um, over the bed area. So again, lots of storage space is uh, trying to utilize the, the most out of the vehicle. Um, these cabinets are secured directly to the van frame, so they're uh, not uh, connected to any sort of uh, framing, uh, wood framing, just to the frame of the van, so they're nice and solid, they're not going to go anywhere. And that also allows for maximum amount of space. Uh, below these upper cabinets here, we've got flip down cabinets, which is a great convenient spot for spices over your cooking surface and your odds and ends like silverware and spatulas and uh, things that don't quite need as much uh, space. We also have drawer space in here. Uh, we've got full length um, easy slide drawers uh, with pull latches so that everything stays closed and secure when you're traveling. So they close and click locked so they won't come open. So we've got two large drawers there. Um, we've got another drawer over here and another drawer on that side. So anywhere I could utilize some extra space, I, I put a drawer because drawers are always great use of, of small compartments to be able to tuck little things away. In the shower area where I was just standing, uh, I build these showers out of one piece, half inch vinyl uh, PVC. Uh, what I like about that is it allows for me to secure it right to the frame. It kind of contours to the frame of the van. Allows you to get the maximum amount of space out of these vans because they're not very wide and you really need to maximize your width. Here we've got a shower head on a hose with a Delta monitor uh, valve. What I do like about this valve is you have your hot and cold control settings here and you can set that at your temperature that you like and then you can um, turn this up a little bit if you want just a little bit of a shower and you can turn that on and off to conserve water. Again, long trips, you only have so much water um, so it's a great water conservation feature. You, you get wet. You soap yourself up and then you can turn the water back on without it being freezing cold and then getting to the hot and refining your temperature. So I really like this valve by Delta. Uh, it's got that individual temperature control and the water volume control. I'll put a link to that in the description below if you're looking to pick that up. Moving down the wall, we've got the waterproof shower light here. So uh, you can push that in for a uh, light in the shower when you're taking a shower. Uh, below we've got a nature's head composting toilet that the customer wanted. Uh, a little bit different from the last build that I did. I do really like this toilet. It's a little bit smaller than um, the toilet I used last time which allows for more foot area. And you can put your foot up there when you're showering and soap up and it just, it works out real nice for the use of space and it does good in here in the wet environment. Um, the vent hose goes through the wall of the shower and down and vents out the bottom of the van. And the shower door is a self-retractable cleaning shower door by Nautilus, uh, which is a great use of space. It only takes up that much space and it's a little privacy and a great shower. Uh, keep the water off the floor. Moving backwards, we've got a full-size garment closet. Usually I'll make hanging space in here for hanging clothes. This customer wanted a shelf in here, so um, I put a shelf in here for them. And another upper cabinet above and a drawer below. And down below the drawer is where we have the propane furnace for heating in the winter, so that's tucked down and out of the way. There's a little on and off button uh, below it for turning it on and off if you want to control it that way. Here we have the bench seat where you can step up and get up into bed. It also, the cover comes off of this one like it does in the front. And you've got some storage area in there that goes way back underneath and way back underneath the other way. 
So lots of storage for things if you got bags. The customer wanted a more of a stealth look in this fan, so we didn't put any windows in it. Instead, we put two Max Air fans in it. We have a automatic one up front here, and in the back, we've got a manual one that you can reach and adjust uh, from the bed. It really works out great uh, when you're sleeping. This one, you'll have it to where it pulls the air out of the vehicle, and that one you have it where it pushes the air in, and it really creates a perfect uh, flow of air through here right down on the bed when you're sleeping, so it's great to cool you down at night before bedtime. There are a couple ways to charge the batteries in this van. One is the solar panels up top. We've got two 170 watt solar panels, Renogy solar panels. The other way is through the alternator. The alternator charges through a 60 amp uh, DC to DC charger. And then the third way to charge the batteries is through the shore power outlet on the outside. Under the sink, we've got some good universal storage for a trash can. Uh, we've got the drainage going down to the gray water tanks. Um, on the kitchen side, we have a uh, five gallon gray water tank. And on the shower side, we've got a 20 gallon gray water tank. Uh, under here, we also have a fire extinguisher and that's where we keep the uh, three stage water filter up underneath here too. Up here, we have the battery monitor, which shows you the state of the battery, how much power you're using. Uh, this is a great display. This is Renogy's uh, battery monitor. I like it because it's it's simple, it's really easy to use, and it clearly shows how much battery you have left, which is really the only big question you really need <laughs> to know. Um, next to that, I've got a light switch for the lights above the oven. Next to that is the ball valve for the gray water tank in the shower. So I can open that and that will drain if I'm in a spot that I can safely uh, drain that. And then this next button here is for the gray water valve for the sink. The bed I have designed to hinge up on both sides. So it's a great dual feature. One, if you're, I don't know, at the ocean and you wanna sit up in bed and sit up and face out the ocean or a drive-in movie, you can sit there. It's also a great access for the electrical compartment. Over here, we've got the on-off switch uh, that cuts all the power to the van. Uh, if you ever need anything serviced or there's an emergency where you need to shut the power off. Uh, I put in, this is a little bit different setup than I had in the last van. I have, uh, it's a dual compartment for the AC fuses and over there for the DC fuses too. I really like that because it's back out of the way, keeps it free from cables in there. So it's a nice, it keeps us nice and clean in here and, and tidy. Let's go around back and go check out the garage area. In back we have a garage area. Got lots of space underneath here. Uh, customer wanted to be able to fit a mountain bike in here. So we've got a lot of space down there. Up top, you can get a good look at some of the other controls here. We've got the remote for the Max Air fan. We've got a thermostat for the propane heater. Next to that, we've got a switch for the electric hot water tank. And below that, we've got a carbon monoxide and propane detector for safety. We've got a couple of reading lights up here for nighttime reading. We've got uh, AC power outlets for charging your laptop or uh, anything else. Also, these uh, um, reading lights have USBs in the bottom for charging your phone. So we showed how the bed flips up, faces backwards. It also flips up to face forwards. That's really a nice feature for sitting up in bed, uh, watching, uh, you could have a TV mounted in that upper cabinet or maybe have a iPad holder on the ceiling there. So this tips up like that, these legs come out and sit right into this back brace for sitting up in bed to face forward. Uh, moving down below that is kind of the nuts and bolts or the utility room of the vehicle. This side is all the plumbing. In here we've got a, I, I made a, a full length flap to flip up so you can get in and access all the plumbing if you have to winterize it or operate some valves. We have a 33 gallon 
fresh water tank tucked into the right there. And we also have um, some valves that can hook up to an air hose here for easy winterization for blowing out the system. Got a fresh water hose tucked in in here next to the water pump and the uh, accumulator tank, which gives some air pressure. There's some other valves in here which are useful for the way I have this plumbing set up. I'll show you how that goes from this other um, door here. So the main way to fill the fresh water tank is this hose here where you have a, a valve that you can open and close and you just connect it up to a hose and it will fill the water tank. There's another way of filling this water tank that I designed. By throwing some of these valves, you can actually have the onboard water pump draw water up out of the, the drain tube and that can fill the tank also. Uh, very useful if you're in somewhere like Mexico where you have to go to water stations to get water and you get your water in either a six gallon jug you know, fill up the six gallon jugs and bring them over and have to transfer that water into your water tank. Um, it's an easy way to draw water up out of a five gallon bucket, the six gallon water tank, or even take the hose and throw it into a creek that you're by and fill up that way. In here we also have the hose for the rear water faucet. It can be used as a shower or it can be used to hose off your mountain bike or wash your dog. It plugs into here quarter turn. Takes a little bit to fill up the tube. And then you can wash your dog, clean your mountain bike. So that's a nice handy feature there. Automatic shut off on it also so that when the hose is not hooked up to it, it can't run. And we have both hot and cold water in the back for a shower. And down below that is the drain tube that I talked about. You can hook that up and drain or draw water up out. In this van, we were able to, to put the batteries down below and some of the other electrical up in front, which allowed a lot of extra space in here. So I, there's actually some extra space down inside here for just cables or maybe toes, a toe strap or any other random things that you'd like to store uh, that you don't want to have in the front. So there's some extra storage in the back also. One thing about the lighting, I actually took the standard lighting that's in the transits and I moved some of the lights down into the garage area. They work on the doors like they would standard with the vehicle. So it's kind of handy to not have to turn the lights on and off, but when you open the doors, they pop on. Up here we have the switch for the water pump, which is nice to be able to switch that water pump on and off when you're drawing water, like I talked about earlier, out of a bucket. Underneath we have a 12 gallon propane tank. So it's externally mounted, which is nice. Uh, with a remote fill so the propane storage is outside in a safe area. Thanks for coming along on the walkthrough. If you're interested in having narrow road van conversions do a custom layout to your exact specifications, you can email me, I'll put that in the description below, and we'll see you on the narrow road.